notice that the camera is opposite. So if you itch on this side, it's really yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, and we are live. Hello, I don't know if we have anyone with us yet. The little eyeball doesn't tell me we have anyone yet, but we will, and we get a lot of friends that also watch our replay. So as our friends are coming on with us, if you'd be so kind to say hello to us, let us know you're here with us. Crystal is gonna share this on her page as well. You might have already done that, huh, Crystal? Did you? Oh, yeah. Look at she's yeah, huh? Yes. I'm doing it right now. I'm That's trying to think of something nice to say. I mean, you know, like fun. Well, and here's what I do know. Our Laura is in the air flying today home. Oh, really? She was really sad she wasn't going to be here. She's, yeah, she's flying home. I think she was with her mama in Arizona. So I think you're anyways. right. We yep. do have somebody here. So I hope that they choose to say hi. I hope so too. But I think we get a lot of stalker people that do not. It's so funny. <laughs> like, I didn't know they were on, but they gave us a big like and I, hmm, hmm, that's okay. I'm just glad everybody's here. Yes, so okay. I, welcome to Beyond the Classroom. This is our Young Entrepreneur mm -hmm. Series. And I am so excited that we have Savannah Jackson of Mixed Coffee and Community with us. My name is Shara Grasser. I'm a youth empowerment coach, the founder and director of Me Powerment Programs. And I'm also the mom of two young adults. Um, my Tyler is 25. My Emmy is 22. Both of them are graduates of the same high school as Savannah, which is was fun to find out. Yep, Bumble High graduates. Mm -hmm. Crystal, mm -hmm. I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Crystal Litz. I am. I work in the Edmond School District as a student intervention coordinator. I am a certified life coach. I am a Weight Watcher coach. I'm a mom of two wonderful children and my son's uh, beautiful girlfriend. I consider mine as well. And I have my dogs. You know, I'm empty nesting with my dogs. So they are my everything. You might hear them soon. They like to join us at the best times. Yeah, they do. And so I just want to, um, I'm going to, we're going to let Savannah roll with this, but I just want to let everyone know how excited we are to have Savannah with us. So Savannah's, okay, so Savannah's, so I learned about this. So I was going to this coffee shop down in Mill Creek off of 164th before it was mixed. And then I quit, something happened. I don't know what it was, but anyways, <laughs> something happened. Yeah, you got me. And so then all of a sudden, you know, I was in was just hearing about mixed and I was like, oh, there's someone in there again. And I had to go in and then I find out, oh my God, this is a young entrepreneur. Like this is Savannah, like 25 year old Savannah living her dream and the hustle and grind of the dream. I mean, we all know, right? There's a lot of that. And I was like, oh man, there is so much story, Savannah, like in all of this that I was like, we have to have you on. Like Crystal and I have been talking about how we really want to nurture our entrepreneurs and especially our young dreamers. Like it's so easy to get shut down. It is so easy, right? Like to have others dim your light and to be, and to just not continue to nurture that. And you have, and you've stuck through the hard and you're here and you're successful and you're living in this. And so anyways, I was like, we got to get her on. We got to hear this story. So Savannah, I'm going to go ahead and let you kind of introduce yourself. And I would love to know, oh, yay, Savannah Fogg is Monica. I love it too, Monica. Good. Yay. <laughs> so I'd love if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. And I'm really excited to hear like i want to know like when you had this vision or this dream yeah and like what that when did that start what did that look like and how did you bring this to reality 
All right. This is going to be a long story, everyone. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm taking you back, taking you way back. But um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. And thank you both for inviting me. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, my name is Savannah Jackson. I am 25. I'm black and I'm Ecuadorian. And uh, I've lived in Bothell since 2007. I moved here when I was 11. Um, went to Bothell High School, went to uh, Western Washington University in Bellingham for college, then went to grad school, but we'll get into that later. Um, mm -hmm. I've got two brothers. Um, we were super involved in like sports at school. I, I, was, I just swam. That was just me. My brothers were involved. <laughs> in <the sports. laughs> uh, but I was like the biggest cheerleader. Um, for my brothers, I wasn't on a true team. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, like just grew up here um, and I've always felt different. And um, that was, you know, because I'm black and brown <laughs> living in a not very diverse area. Um, it has grown in diversity. I will say I'm very proud of my town. But uh, yeah, growing up here was always just uh, different um, and hard. And so, um, you know, did that, like, who am I? What am I? I'm not black. I'm not Latin. I'm not Latinx. I'm mixed. I'm mixed. And so, you know, growing up with that mindset um, kind of created, created my dream. And in high school, I remember I was in ASB and uh, we were doing some lesson on leadership or whatever. And, you know, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> what the assignment <laughs> was to make a collage of what you want to do, like just whatever you wanted to do. Um, and I remember I just put two words and it was changed lives and it was, it was what changed lives. Oh. And I didn't know how I thought at the time, I remember I really wanted to be a teacher because, um, I had a great ASB teacher, my choir teacher, favorite teacher ever. Um, I was homeschooled for a while. So my mom being my teacher. Um, and then when the first year I did go to school, um, I had this English teacher and she um, just changed my life. And I wanted to do that. So I wanted to be a teacher. And so that's why I went to Western. I was going to do their uh, teaching program. I did teaching academy at Bothell. Um, you know, I it was just uh, a thing I wanted to do. Um, so at the time when I was in high school, I was like, I'm going to change lives just like my teachers have done for me. Um, mm. and I want them to, you know, feel good, like students. And I want to grow the next generation. That was, that was the, the plan. Um, and then I went to school for that and I was like, mm, never mind. <laughs> I actually don't like kids. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I was like, all right, what else am I going to do? And it took a while to figure it out. And, um, I found anthropology at, um, Western and I took one class and I declared my major the next day. And after that, I only took anthropology classes and that was the end of my sophomore year. So I had two years where I just took anthropology classes. Um, you needed 60 of anthropology credits to graduate, I took 120. I took every single anthropology class offered at my school. Um, and if you don't know, anthropology is the study of human beings. And so I there's cultures and trying to find who I was, because um, I've always struggled with who am I? You know, my dad is black, my mom is Latina. We're from different countries. And there's different food and different cultures, but I was both, but neither enough. It felt weird. And so just growing up like that, I put myself into anthropology and it just all kind of made sense that like everyone, even within the culture, is just different. And so I didn't need to feel like I fit in with one or the other. I'm just me, you know, I'm mixed. 
And so that was just like mind boggling. And then I got to deep go into my own history and in my family and figure out, you know, where did my ancestors come from? You know, my mom is indigenous Ecuadorian. That's South America. I'm, I'm native. I was like, oh my God, I'm native American. Like, oh my, what, what? <laughs> yeah. And then, where did my family before we came on the slave ships, where, where were we from that? And it was just like crazy. So, um, sorry, I'm, this is a really long story, but <laughs> no, <good. laughs> it's in the end, <laughs> um, but so just, just figuring that out, fell in love with people, cultures and everything. And then human rights. So I went to grad school in Costa Rica, um, with the, it, the school is called university for peace. And it was a United Nations school. It was awesome. There was 50, uh, sorry, 150 students with 53 countries represented at the school. And so we were from everywhere. I can go to pretty much any country in the world. And I know I have a couch to sleep on. Um, that was the coolest thing. And so my program there was international law and human rights because I wanted to work for the UN. Like That was the new dream when I, I could change lives by you know, changing things internationally, like for everyone. I was like, let's do that. Um, I get to school and I'm like, whoa, the UN is really corrupt. <laughs> so let me just go back to that right now. Um, and so I was lost again and I got home and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I interned for a bunch of um, things my senior year of, of, of uh, college and then at UPeace, um, I just tried to do everything. Um, to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, but I, I volunteered. The one thing that I really liked was uh, working at a domestic violence center. And I was like, that's really important work. It's super hard. I have a weak heart. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I cry all the time. So it was really hard, but I felt like it was mm -hmm. my purpose to do something like that. So when I got home from grad school, it was June 2019. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take six months. I'm going to just play video games. I'm not going to do anything. I've been in school since I was two years old. I'm done. I need a break. And I took that break and it was so fun. January came. My birthday's in January, January 2020. I was super, I went to New York for two weeks and I was like, I'm going to apply to a bunch of places. Hopefully I get to move here. I was born there. My I have family there. So I was like, all right, let's do this. So I applied to a bunch of places when I was there and just visiting for my birthday. I get back home, COVID. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm just gonna stay home for a little bit. You know, it'll be gone by summer. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll uh, apply locally maybe. Maybe I get like a job at home, whatever. If I don't, I'm lucky I get to live at home. You know, my I'm taken care of. My family is amazing. I'm like, whatever. It'll get better soon. It didn't get better and it didn't. And then it's winter again, <laughs> 2020, December. And I was like, okay, well, I'm bored. Um, actually, forgot the most important part. June, June, 2020, George Floyd's murder. I had a really hard time with that. Um, Mm -hmm. right dampen the mood um but yeah I had a really really hard time with that and I have been to protests before about the same thing um but the ones that I I couldn't go the first couple of days um because I was so mad I was like <laughs> I was I was so mad that I wasn't mad because I was so used to it um, and then, you know, my whole studies was just conflict and war and, and people and cultures and religion and all this stuff that just makes other people just hate other people. And so I was just so mad. And I went to a protest. Uh, actually, Jackson High School, uh, the kids there organized it. And I was like, let me go to that. <laughs> that one seems a lot better than if I went to Seattle because I was going to not come back probably. <laughs> and so uh, I went and it was so 
amazing to see how many brown kids lived in my city. Because when I went to high school, my graduating class, there was eight black kids. And about four of them were half, half black. And that doesn't make them any less black. I want to make that very clear. But um, it was just not a lot of diversity. And so um, when I saw all those brown and black kids at the protest, I was like, <laughs> like what <laughs> I was like I've lived here for so long and I where did where did you guys come from <laughs> and so other than getting everything out of my off of my chest and just li literally screaming in the streets um it made me feel all so much um protective almost like I have to take care of these guys because there was nobody to take care of me when I was in high school. And so, you know, started doing all this activism. I started this nonprofit called uh, Anti-Racist Communities. Um, I met amazing people. Um, we got some really awesome work done in the city of Bothell. Um, we got them to commit to a DEI position. Um, to pay for one. Um, we got them to take back some terrible ordinances back that are, were still kind of in effect. Um, terrible race. It just like it, we did so much work. And three of my people that I gathered um, actually ran for Bothell City Council and two of them ended up winning. And so uh, I want to give a shout out to Rami, Jenny and Han. Um, for just taking what I was asking for and literally putting it into action. And so that was just amazing. And we just, you know, went through a bunch. So now it's December and I'm like, all right, I'm kind of tired of this activism thing because it takes a lot, it takes a lot. And, you know, I'll never be done. And I don't think I ever wasn't an activist. Um, you know, it's kind of just, a personality trait almost, um, but I was getting really burnt out. I was, it was like every night was just so exhausted, uh, exhausting. Um, uh, we had a lot of, lot of major wins and like really cool things that we were able to accomplish, but just as many heartbreaking losses. And it was, it just took a lot out of me. So I'm like, all right, let's do something else, Savannah. <laughs> Let's find another way to change lives without killing yourself in the process, um, which I still haven't found. But <laughs> <laughs> I want a community center. That's what I want to do. That that was a new dream. That was a new goal. Um, mm. If you haven't noticed that, my dream goals change a lot, <laughs> but all with the same like root. Mm -hmm. um, but community center, I was like, let's do it. My brother was like, okay, like let's do it. Let's do something. How do we do this? Let me look for coffee shops. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but okay, sure. And so we started looking to own a coffee shop and what that would look like for the family and for me and um, kind of went away for a little bit. And then or in February, I found one and it was the newsroom in Mill Creek. And I was like, hey, dad, let's go. And he was like, fine, let's, let's look at it. What's the harm of just going to look. And, uh, we got there and we're like, nope, <laughs> we left. And, uh, then there was one in Bothell called the den. It actually shut down, unfortunately. Um, property, I don't know, whatever. Um, and we're like, this is way too big. Uh, but maybe, I don't know. And so we're just talking and talking and then the newsroom called, and we're like, you know what? Let's just go in one more time. We went in and I was like, you know, I could do I could do something with this. And so we put in the offer and we got the keys April 9th. It was like I it was the best feeling, honestly. I remember I walked in to get the keys from the previous owners with my dad and my youngest brother, my baby brother. Um, he's 20, sorry. Um, but, uh, and we just took a picture and I remember holding him and looking around and being like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I get to like 
share our culture with the world, like with Mill Creek and people like who look like me can see that they can do this. Mm-hmm. And so that was just like oh, amazing. And then soon we were going to operate as the newsroom, just keep everything the same um, and just, you know, get to know the community and see what we could offer it, you know. And the more we started preparing to open and um, the more our neighbors was telling us that we needed to to do something else, to, to branch off, to be our own, mm-hmm. um, we just decided, all right, let's just not open until we're ready and just redo everything. <laughs> And I don't know who we thought we were. (laughs) We just shut down for a little bit, deep cleaned, got the walls painted. I came up with the mission, which was basically just putting me, my experiences, my family, and putting it into our work, putting it into the shop. And um, I hired amazing people. Oh, my team is amazing. Um, yes, I'm here to say yes, they are. Yeah, my, my brother, my best friend from like, I've known her for 13, 14 years. And then uh, I met some people at a protest, got them to join me. Um, another friend from high school, I asked her and then she was like, oh, I can't do it. I'm going to grad school. But t- my coworker, Ashton, really wants a job. She doesn't like this one. And I was like, all right, let me, let me, let me talk to her and hired her on the spot. And my brother's girlfriend's brother is working with us and it's just a great team. And we just decided to put ourselves into it. And so the pan de yuca, the empanadas, the Cuban sandwich, pretty much everything right now that we're selling is house made. Um, It's all things that I grew up eating. And my friends would come over in high school or whatever, and they'd be like, oh, can your mom make those cheesy bread balls? And I'm like, pan de yuca, yeah. And that was <laughs> our snack that my mom would make all the time. And empanadas were were special scenario. Like, we would get them on special occasions because uh, it took her all day to make, and we would never help her. Sorry, mom. <laughs> 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 now we make them all the time. Um, but th- those would last 30 seconds in my house and you have to eat them hot and burn your mouth because if you don't get, if you don't eat it quick, you don't get another one and they're gone. <laughs> so, um, I, we just, I, uh, I wanted to work with other BIPOC black owned businesses. And so Zuri's Donuts, um, which is now Zuri's Gourmet Desserts, sorry keep forgetting um tuba bakery and everett zuri's is in linwood um the chocolate we get comes from ecuador and we work with this uh it's called the ecuadorian chocolate factory they're based in texas but they're amazing they own a plant a cocoa plantation in ecuador his family does and so we get really fresh delicious chocolate um that we melt into our own chocolate sauce for mochas um and just everything that we do at the shop is just a reflection of of my family and our experience living in Mill Creek and all over the world, honestly, we travel a lot. Um, And it's about, it's showing people who look like me that one, we're here too, we're here. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm here to protect you all now and we're, we have really good stuff <laughs> that we just <laughs> to myself anymore. So that's kind of how Mixed began. And we got the name, actually, my dad's uh, old co-worker friend, she's great, um, came up with it because I, I wanted to name it The Revolution or um, I can't remember the other name that I wanted. And my dad wanted to name it... Um, black something i don't know like i don't know and i was like wait no we're but we're not just black i gotta show everybody and so he his co-worker was like mixed because your kids are mixed and you're gonna mix drinks and you're gonna mix community and i was like oh that's the one <laughs> yeah the one. and um the colors mean a lot it's the colors of the ecuadorian flag so it's red um yellow and green not green oh my god blue red 
<laughs> yellow and blue. Yeah. Um, and so that's the the color of our, our logo and our sign. And then there's a little coffee mug um, with two coffee beans in a, in a little heart um, because we care about the community and we're mixed coffee and community. Mm -hmm. And we are just about the community. We I want to serve and I want to to uh, showcase and share and um, yeah. not just share with you my stuff, but like share um, our stuff and like yeah. our cultures and our being. Um, I truly believe that once you love your neighbors, uh, once you know your neighbors, you're going to love them. And once we start loving each other, we're going to take care of each other. And when we take care of each other, everything, there, there's there's nothing that really can go, go wrong. Mm -hmm. So part of uh, sharing all of my stuff and uh, food and, and culture and all of that, I, I just want to be there for people who need me because I would have loved a mixed growing up. Oh my God. I would have figured out what I figured out in grad school <laughs> about who I am way before. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, regret anything or any, like I don't look down upon growing up here and the way that I did because it made me me, but um, it would have been a lot easier, I think, if I uh, figured out self-love a little mm -hmm. bit earlier and stuff. Sorry, I'm blab blabbling, babbling, but that's kind of just how Mixed began and where we're at now. We're all about the community, um, got really fun events yeah. um, every day and just, I'm always looking for feedback, but what, what do you need? You know, what do you need from us, from me? Um, what do you need from each other, the community? Like, let's work together, so. <laughs> well, wow. I am like super excited. I've got all these thoughts in my head and I know we only have so much time and I know Shara wants to talk too, but I jumped in first. I know. I'm, I, I'm proud of you for doing that because that's what you're I, I need to know and I want our community to know. I was chatting in the chat the whole time because I just love so many things that you said. So mixing coffee for our mixed for a mixed community just like hit me right in the heart. So I want to know what the different days of the week, what you're doing. You said you have different events yeah. and things like that, because I, I want to go and I want my friends to come. I've actually been down there a couple of times. I have seen you. I didn't want to introduce myself because I would have cried because that's, I'm a crier. Um, well, <laughs> but, yeah. you're so, <laughs> so tell us what, what do you have going on down there? Yeah, so every day we have a cool, fun event, um, and they're always changing. I think month to month, I think I'm going to change things up, maybe if they stay, whatever. We're new business. We're trying things out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this month we have on Monday, soup, all day. So it's we call it Super Monday. Um, so every Monday we'll have a new soup starting at 11 a.m. till we close. Um, we can do we do fun combos. This week was a tomato soup, or today was a tomato soup, and we have a gourmet grilled cheese already. So we're doing like a little soup and soup and sandwich combo today. Um, and the soup, the soups that we serve, we try to make them vegetarian and gluten free yeah. and everything. So it's super inclusive. So tomato soup last week was mushroom bisque. Oh, that was so good. Oh my goodness. Mm. Um, yeah. So super Mondays, delicious. Tuesday, um, last month we were doing drop-in tutoring, um, but we didn't really put together a great program, so uh, we're going to do that one better for next year. <laughs> um, but this, I think we're doing, let me check my notes. I think it's chess. We're doing chess all day on Tuesday. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So, yes. yeah. So um, on Tuesdays, we have just chess day. And my family, my brother was nationally ranked back in the day. He's super chess nerd. Family loves chess. I taught him how to play. I quit after he got better than me. So um, <laughs> uh, 
uh yeah so uh chess all day we have so many chess boards my family collects them we're weird we also collect monopoly boards but that's later on um <laughs> Uh, yeah, we could, we just, we're weird. We're weird family. We're super nerdy too. Um, so everything in our shop is just nerd alert. Um, but yeah, so chess Tuesdays, Wednesday is probably my favorite event. Uh, it's called wind down Wednesday. So, uh, I think middle of the week work week, we're all tired. We don't want to go to work tomorrow, but we have to. And so it's a good winding down activities so we have coloring we've got puzzles and we just hang out and chat and um right now everything in the shop is house made my mom is in the kitchen she's making the best desserts so i'm always eating a brownie or a cookie or a lemon pound cake she made the other day oh my goodness so good um and yeah i'm just hanging out getting to know the community and that it's just my favorite it's my favorite time because people are coloring and then we post your 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 coloring pages or whatever on the wall so i can't wait to see until the like the whole wall is just filled with people's drawings and stuff i'm, I'm really excited for that um so that's on wednesday and then thursday we have a stitch together um my mom has always been a crafter so she knits she crochets she spins yarn she weaves she sews, she does all this fiber stuff. And so um, she's met a ton of people in her life that like to do the same. And so they all, it started off just my mom and her friends um, on Thursdays, they would get together. And I was like, wait, let's open this to the community. And we've met so many amazing crafters and like, seeing everybody's progress um, just is great like every week people just show up and this lady brings her spinning wheel and it's so fun and we just hang out again and, oh. and, drink and eat and, and yeah, yeah. Um, so that's Thursday and then Friday is just game day all day so bring your board games we have tons of board games at the shop already um just yeah, it's just game day. Um, I'm challenging everyone who walks the door to a game of Monopoly because, like I mentioned earlier, family's super nerdy about it. We collect uh, Monopoly. We have at the shop, I think we have Game of Thrones, Lion King, regular, and then a Nintendo one. Um, but at home, we have Dragon Ball Z, uh, Rick and Morty, SpongeBob, <laughs> Disney. Like, we have so many Monopoly boards. And we usually just keep the board and throw everything else away because we only need one set. But... Um, yeah, we're kind of embarrassingly nerdy. <laughs> and then Saturdays, um, this month, actually, we're having a maker's market for the holidays. So um, every Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 3, maybe a little at later and before, we'll see, but around mm -hmm. 11 to 3. Um, we're going to have BIPOC makers uh, come uh, and just sell, sell their stuff. Um, this Saturday, we're going to have pottery, someone who's going to bring uh, ceramics, um, someone who is selling holiday cards. They're so cute. Um, I posted a little uh, teaser on our Instagram at Mixed Coffee Shop if you want to go check it out. Um, and then pottery, home goods. There's this lady, she's making tote bags and tea towels, like cute little things like that. And then, yeah, every day there's just something new, candles, art, um so many so many so many things um so that's that's saturday and sunday for the month of december and uh, i will always post on instagram what kind of events we're having we're actually having a noche buena on the 23rd of december and if you don't know noche buena is um basically in latino culture in in ecuador specifically i don't know uh, every country up there but uh we do christmas christmas eve basically so you go to to mass all day on saturday um and sunday but <laughs> you go to mass um and then go eat we eat pretty late in ecuador um so you eat dinner you hang out um i think you go back to mass i don't know um and then when you come home it's midnight and 
you just open your presents and you eat more and you just party basically all night. And then Christmas Day is actually you just lazy around you, where you go to church in the morning, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, then you just it's just a normal day after that. And so um, in my family, we kind of kind of do the same thing. Um, Christmas Eve is is where we have our dinner. Um as a family, uh, it's the last day we play our family Olympics we've got going on. <laughs> um, and then whoever wins that gets to choose the movie. And yeah, so we do all of the celebrating on Christmas Eve um, instead of Christmas Day, I guess. But um, yeah, so sorry, Noche Buena. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, that party at midnight is called Noche Buena. So the shop is actually partnering with an Ecuadorian street food pop-up restaurant. Is uh, The restaurant is called Garzon. Um, this man named Jose, he found us. He's Ecuadorian. Um, he does fu Ecuadorian fusion mixed dishes. So we're going to have a DJ. There's going to be lights. It's going to be a party. So Noche Buena, uh, December 23rd, uh, starting at 8 or 7. One of the, and I'll post when we know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's going to be very fun. I'm really excited about that. Oh, so. let's go, Crystal. Yes. Yeah. You're going to eat. Come hungry. Come okay. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now well, I, I can do that. Fun. Yeah. But sorry, my long answers, but that's, that's oh, I love sorry. It. so good. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> did, oh, yeah. Crystal, did you have something else? Well, I always have stuff to say, but I was trying to be kind to let you say something. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> um, we, one of the things I want to say is like, you've mentioned a couple of times how you feel like you've got this total nerdy shop going on. I got to tell you, I didn't pick up that vibe at all. I walked in, it was really welcoming and there's all these pictures painted all over the place. Then I think they're for sale. I'm have an assumption that they are painted by different people. Um, yeah, like that's another cool thing about your shop. Tell us about the pictures. Yeah, yeah. So we have a lot of art on our walls. Um, totally forgot about that. Um, most of yeah. the artists are BIPOC. Um, I just thought, you know, this community space. So I was like, let's get the community to put their piece in all of this. Um, and so we, I reached out to some of them. I know some of the artists, like personally, um, and then others I just put out, like, I think a week or two before I opened, I was like, hey, I need art. If you guys want to sell it, drop them off. We'll talk. I'll write a contract later, but <laughs> let's do this. And so, um, yeah, they they put their art up and all of it is for, or 90% of it is for sale. Um, we do have some pieces that my family has got from Ecuador and um, from traveling to Africa and like just everywhere. Um, my family, we travel a lot, so uh, we pick up a lot of random stuff. <laughs> and so, yeah, most of the art is for sale. And uh, what I like to tell people so they know where the money is going, it goes straight to the artist. I don't like charging commission. I think that's dumb. I didn't do anything to create these beautiful pieces. And they're doing me a favor by having it on our walls. So um, the money just goes straight to the artist. Um and yeah, so by buying the art at Mixed, you're supporting local BIPOC young artists. Wow. So it's awesome. Yeah. If you have any art, let me know. <laughs> I was looking for more. <laughs> they go pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and I'll and I'll um just follow Crystal on that. Like I love the energy in there. You walk in, it's so inclusive you feel safe. And like, that's really important to me on a lot of different levels. Um, you feel safe in there. Everybody's friendly. Like I love whoever is always behind the counter there. I just love them. Adorable, fun, right? Like great personalities. And, and the drinks are really good. I, come on. Like she puts out the other day that there, she's got a dairy free eggnog. And yeah, I'm like, 
what? I'm so going to be there. And I, I did. And it was like, oh, my God, I, I did not know there was dairy-free eggnog. And it was delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. Yay. So, you know, it was, it's just, I love following you on social media because you are really good about sharing what's going on. I love going in there because the energy and just the space and the people, it's inclusive. It feels safe. That's really important piece to this too. And Savannah, I mean, the whole, like this, it feels like we're all three like sisters in this because a lot of our heart really is, we are always talking about what can we do for our community, right? Like we got to do better. Like, yeah. You know, and I always, there's that saying, if you know better, you do better. And I keep feeling like I'm learning more and more. And so, okay, now we got to do more, right? And you're such an, your story is such an example of that. And you're right, though your vision and goals change, what am I going to be when I grow up? It's still all stemmed, right, to that same thing, that same root. And and here it is, you know, you're operating a space that's not that. Yeah, it's your and your family are operating it, but it's the communities. Yeah, it's the communities. So what would you since you've opened mixed and God, you opened it during COVID. I feel like these are two <laughs> like that alone is a story. So I feel like both of these are like loaded questions or I could answer them. I don't for you. You know, I would say since you've opened, what has been you, what you would say is your biggest success and what has been your biggest challenge? Yeah. I, okay. Let's start off with the challenges. Yep. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I will always tell i i've gotten some people come in like oh you're so young can i talk to you about opening a business and i'm like yeah i don't know how much i can help you but yeah i got you and the first thing i say is everyone told me that this was going to be hard and i knew it and i believed it and i did know but i didn't know no. how hard it was going to be. I cry so many days in the week, <laughs> so many hours in the day of just pure exhaustion. And I'm going to cry now. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed, but it is the most rewarding, yeah. heart, like fulfilling thing that I've ever done. So I would not ever trade this, but man, it is hard work. And I'm lucky that I have my mom who's there almost as much as I am all day, every day. Um, my dad who keeps us financially in check, <laughs> my brother, <laughs> Miles, he does all the data stuff for us. So if I have any questions like, Hey, is this worth keeping on the menu? Are people buying it? Or, Hey, am I scheduling too many hours in the day? Are we losing too much money? What's going on? I, he's got, he's the guy. My dad's the guy. My mom's the guy. <laughs> We're all just awesome. And um, I'm so lucky that I have that support, but I am so tired and I am insane for uh, doing this. Uh, but it is the most amazing thing. And I will always tell people, if you love it, do it. If yeah. you're in between, I just convinced my friend, um, she wanted to start this business, but she had like that stable job, that income was good, and but she didn't like it. It wasn't, her, her heart wasn't in it. And she really wanted to start this business and it was going to be rough, but you know, and I was like, dude, why would you waste your time on the planet doing something that you're not all for just because you can like have money and I, that's great. I'm not saying, you know, don't do it, you know, but like, does it make you feel good? And that's, the point of being here is to make us feel good and to do what we love. And so well, my dog is wants to go outside. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> later, Delilah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's just the hardest thing. Um, specifically, that's the word, right? Yeah, specifically, I um, think the hardest thing about opening mixed um, would be remembering why 
I am doing it. And um, that would be uh, the haters. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am black, Latinx, 25, woman. Hear in- me roar! Yeah. <laughs> in Mill Creek, uh, where people don't look like me, um, people try to lie. They try to uh, make me look bad, make up things to shut me down. I could count on my, yeah, my hands and my toes how many people have tried to shut me down. Um, either like emotionally, literally shut down the shop, health department, um, <laughs> uh, for no reasons or whatever. Um, and it's really hard to remember why we're doing it or why I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, just keeping you, the vision and the hope and your yourself basically alive. Um, that's probably the hardest part. Um, roll quick, sorry. Uh, we are requiring proof of vaccination um, for dine-in customers. So if you're coming in to like sit for a while, um, then we're asking to just show proof of vaccination because we want to keep everyone safe. Um, I've had up close battles with COVID. Um, I had it in 2020, January, when I went to New York, actually. Sorry, (laughs) probably started it over there. (laughs) But uh, um, my grandmother had it right when lockdown started, so in March, so we couldn't go visit her in, in New York. And she was sick for 95 days. Just, I did not know if I was ever gonna see her again, sick. Um, and so I don't want anyone coming in my store getting sick because of me and my shop having to go through that. No, not, not in my store. So that's why we're requiring proof of vaccination. Um, and a lot of people did not like that. (laughs) They did not like that. And not only did I get spit on, um, thrown thing, things were thrown at me. And my staff um, yelled, just screamed at. Um, One lady refused to move from the counter. I was like, am I going to have to drag this lady out of my store? Like, what's going on? Um, Just not only that, but the racist and hateful comments and DMs and phone calls. They found out what my my personal phone number was. Um, Just, just telling me to go to the back of the bus, that I'm a Nazi, that uh, I'm segregating. And doesn't that sound familiar? That's what I did to your grandparents. Like it's terrible, terrible things were uh, said to me, go drink out of your own water fountain. Just terrible things. Um, wow. So it was really hard. And I, unfortunately, am used to that, but the level, um, cause we were also on the news for this, um the level of just hate i didn't think that it was worth it i didn't um so coming back from that and it's still kind of you know it it it's it still hurts um no matter how many times you hear it growing up um and then they would attack like my staff and my family and ooh, you don't want to do that with me i am latina <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, that's, that's been the biggest struggle. Um, but the best is this, um, seeing people's face. Oh my gosh. Uh, every time I make a Savannah fog, I know Monica, thank you. (laughs) I think it's the best thing on the menu. (laughs) Um, but every time I make it and I see like eyes just glow and like, or when they take a bite of the pan de yuca for the first time, I'm literally like, just waiting <laughs> for the reaction and just the melt, like, oh, and I'm like, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you've been missing out. This, I grew up on this. <laughs> um, that's just the best. And like seeing my shop, this happened yesterday, I don't remember, um, but this group of kids came, freshmen in high school, came and did their secret Santa at my oh. store. And I'm going to cry. It was, 
they're brown. <laughs> they're they were brown kids in my store and doing their secret Santa. And I was just like, they're asking me, how old do you have to be to work here? <laughs> and I'm telling them all about the events and they're like, oh man, I can't drive yet. Can you pick me up? <laughs> and just like, that's why I, I'm doing it. And that just me, that, seeing that, those small moments of people just enjoying their time in the space that I built. It's awesome. So oh. thanks for everyone who's uh, shown up. Sorry, gosh, my God. <laughs> but you're with your we are with your people. I definitely <laughs> yeah. so, so I just want to share since we went there, <laughs> that story that went to the news is actually how I learned about mix because I had known it as what it was before. Right. But yeah. then I, I had, I didn't know it had switched hands and all of that. And then I heard about mix and I'm like, Oh my God, that's like right in my neighborhood. Oh my God. That's right where I used to, you know, I had gone a few times and I knew Savannah and you know, this, I knew I had to go down there. I had to meet you. Because this is going to make me cry. You are everything, everything. I teach our kids to be in my work, how to use their voice, because it doesn't matter how old you are. It matters what you believe and what you have to say. It freaking matters. And that is exactly what you did. You went against, well, I, we can't say against the norm. I mean, every what is the norm? But you spoke out and did what you needed to do to protect not just you and your family, but your people and your community as a whole. That feels right in your heart. And you chose to go with that even though you knew it was going to rub people wrong. That I will tell you right there, of course, is what brought me in. And woo, we had a party in the shop because everybody wanted to know what I was, why I was so excited. <laughs> that poor gentleman from out of town. Anyways, he's fine. I'm sure he's fine. Anyways, but I, it just was like, that is also though brings to me that level of safety. You know, I got a kid that's diabetic who's afraid to go out because he swears if he gets COVID, he's going to die because the flu puts him in the hospital. I know now he could come to mixed and do his homework, plug into his classes, hang out and play games. And he's going to feel safe. I mean, like do you, what that does, even just to a mama, like that is everything for me. Um, I just, I can't thank you enough. Like I, we need a whole nother hour with you. I just, you know, Crystal and I need to get down there. We need to do a little live while we're down there and in the action, maybe on the 23rd. I know. And I've got to let all my Latina friends know about this. My homies, I got to let them know. They like to tell me that I'm a, a Hispanic lady trapped in a white body. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're watching, I guess I'm. You're not alone. <laughs> I got, yeah, we got to get down there. So, well, I will tell you one thing that everybody will miss out on when we do go live there is when I was there. Anyways, I don't know if this happened when you were there, but they were giving out little samples of really yummy food. I think it was lemon something when I was there because. That's why I said yes, because I love lemon. But was it the lemon pound cake? It must have been. Well, I don't know. We're, we're just there. <laughs> no, no, and it wasn't the lemon pound cake because okay. it had okay. been a little while. Okay. But I thought it was lemon. Anyways, it was good, whatever it was. I was just so enamored by all of the art and trying to get up enough courage to like say hi because I did know this story. Shara called me busting at all of the seams she has, telling me I had to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shara. And thank you. Yeah. Like, thank you. And yes, please next time say hi. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I can because I, I, that yeah. I actually yeah. cried with you. I mean, yeah. I, we're, we're family now. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Um, I loved everything about your story. I love everything about the uh, the the whole family experience and the fact that your family is with you and and supporting you, but not just supporting you, actually living this dream out with you. And all of that dang hard and crap that happened and things that you say you're used to because it happens should never happen. But honestly, that is part of your story that that yeah. really draws others in to feel safe. And, you know, I, I almost, I don't even know if I have all the right words here, but it's almost like you have made it very clear that you are here to support and protect others. And taking that crap is exactly what you're doing to make it easy for them. Yeah. So think not easy, God, that's a horrible word to say, but to make the path a little less, bumpy and a little less hard and they, and should, they can get there. Yeah. And, and for that, I, I thank you. I am proud of you. Like I too work with kids every day that have a piece of them that is just not whole because they feel different or yeah. they feel lost or, you know, and we are very diverse in our school and I feel very blessed with that, but still, you feel it and you hear it all the time and you are a piece of our community right in our back door, front door, actually. Um, if I look at it, that is a gift to them. And I appreciate that in you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Savannah, you're amazing. Thank you. I haven't been down. I guess it's only Monday. I was going to say, I haven't been down yet this week. Well, it's because it's only Monday. <laughs> Come Wednesday. Come Wednesday. It's my favorite favorite day. <laughs> All right. Yes. Actually, Wednesday is the day I should I should come down. In fact, I have I have my dad, my father in law with me on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. So maybe I'll bring him in and we'll have a yeah. we'll have a little treat. Yes. Oh. He, would, he would like that. That would be really fun, actually. Um, so I will get in here. I want to make sure I add the mixed Facebook page to our thread here as well. I did put Instagram in there. Um, I, you know, any information that you have, Savannah, feel free to get into that thread too when we're done and add anything. But I just want to say thank you to everyone that joined us live and that is going to catch the replay. And I, if you are local, I encourage you, encourage you, encourage you, like get into mixed. It's right off 164th at the bottom of the hill, Mill Creek, kind of by QFC, actually. That's a good landmark right there. Yeah, you're next to the uh, urgent care. Oh yeah, yeah. Right next to the urgent care. <laughs> and Elliott yep. Bay. Everyone knows where Elliott Bay is. So yeah. 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 <laughs> Elliott yeah, Bay yeah. pizza. Great pizza. Yeah. yeah. It's good. <laughs> Before you hang up, I, I just want a second to say, well, I always take longer than a second, but for for those that just might be listening that are feeling it in them to be upset about they can't go because they're not vaccinated, if you could take a minute and really hear Savannah's heart in the, when you said, when you come in and sit, mm -hmm we ask that you show your vaccination because you're sitting and you're staying. And therefore you and I would have the likelihood of spreading um, unhealthy germs or whatever that we don't want. And so never once did I hear Savannah say anything negative, negative about an unvaccinated by choice or not. Never once did I hear no. that mixed is against um, or for. What I heard was, um, we ask that you show proof of vaccination if you're sitting and staying. And I just want people to hear that. And so I felt the need to say it again. And, and those that want to be angry, think about why you want to be angry. We don't have to be on opposite sides. It's just, that's all I ask. I don't know if you can hear me because I'm frozen on yes, my screen. I can hear you. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I, at least I guess I, that's quite the face to get frozen on. Anyways, <laughs> um, Crystal, I love that. Yeah. I love that because you're right. You can order your drink. You can get your yummy food and snacks. But you're right. There was such a bigger message in that. Yeah. And it's not about sides. It's not. Yeah. It's none of that. Well, and if we could just you're right. If we're struggling with that, if we could just sit there and ask ourselves, what is that about for us? Right. That's all I ask, because yeah. like I speaking genuinely, very, very special people in my life. Um my son, who is adamant to not be vaccinated, I love him just the same. And he and I have very respectful conversations about that, you know, and that's all I ask others to do. Just be respectful about it. Those that felt to be angry. I mean, yeah, on either side, we get upset. It didn't work out the way we wanted it to or, but mm -hmm. you never once said, I don't like you because you're not vaccinated. You never once said, I don't want your business or your money because you're not vaccinated. What and and you may not get it, right? And that's and you said that's okay too. What you said is just I just want to keep my community healthy, as healthy as I can. And you had a live story as to why, a real life story. So that I just hope people can hear it in that sense, as opposed to either, you know, screw you or not. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how we just lost our share because she yep. is the one that is hosting this. <laughs> well, oh, here she is. Okay. <laughs> so with that, it looks okay. like we're having technical difficulties. I just felt led to share it. And Savannah, thank you so much for your passionate heart. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I do want to yeah. add, sorry. I know no, go, girl. Time, but I do want to add that for those who don't agree as well um, with my policy or whatever, I'm doing it to keep you safe as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because not only can you spread, I'm vaccinated, you're not. You could get sick. And yeah. I don't want that to happen. Right. So that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. Yep. Well. I include well, I included them in your community, right? This is yes. all our community. And you made it very clear from the very beginning of our conversation today is your heart, your care is really for everyone. Yes. And 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 so that I guess is why I wanted to share it. It isn't like you were picking apart who's vaccinated, who's not. I only want to care for them. It was yeah. if you're, and so yeah. So that's absolutely. Anyways. I love that. And I think that's a great, great way to end. Poor Savannah's puppy needs to go potty. Oh, she's asleep now. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm like, she oh, has no. these random bursts of, I want attention right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Savannah. I'm so grateful. There she is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you spending this hour with us. I wish you, your staff, and your family a super blessed healthy holiday season and I'll probably be down there on Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Thank How you. Are you open? Oh, it changes all the time, but okay. six. Okay. Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursday, seven, but six most days. Yeah. Okay. We're trying to figure out the best balance. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what time do you, did you just say, Crystal, what time do you open? Close. Close. And what, what time do you open, Savannah? We open weekdays, 7 a.m., okay. weekends, 8. Okay. No, that's great. That Thank never changes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you, friends. Thank you so Thank much you for friends. inviting me. I had a lot of fun. We'll do it again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Even if it's from mixed. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's really fun. fun. We'll just do a yes. random. All yes. right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.